Hi guys! So today's video is, I don't know, hopefully it's gonna be an interesting video that is quite articulated and organized because I have so many thoughts about that and I think, you know, I could really go all over the place, which I, I'm gonna try not to do. I want to talk about the fact, basically, that behavior does not dictate identity. And it might be very broad and a bit abstract sentence, say like that, uh, but when you sort of think a little bit more about it, it really makes a lot of sense. We live in a society where you should label yourself, and the way you label yourself is you look at what you do, and instead of just letting it be an action and a verb of action, it becomes a state, and it becomes a part of your identity. In some situations, it can be really fine. For example, I do not eat um, animals nor animal products and I don't wear them either and I don't participate in any sort of uh, abuse or exploitation of the animals, which makes me a vegan, you know. And I feel deeply in my soul that this is things I do, but that also makes a big part of my identity. So in some situations, yes, it is fine. However, uh, when it comes to sexuality, for example, and that's not for example, that's mainly what I want to talk about. When it comes to sexuality, I think we too often, and by too often I mean 95% of the time, think that what we do means what we are, which I personally think is not very accurate and is also very harmful and detrimental to the perception that we have of ourselves and also the way we build ourselves and we learn to discover ourselves. So basically, I identify as asexual and grey asexual. And um, grey asexual means that I do not feel sexual attraction to people and that I do not wish to engage in sexual intercourses and relationships with people, but that in some given situations or with one or two persons in my life, this could be different, is basically a bit more of a grey, as the name says, of a grey area than purely asexual. But the fact that I have sex or the fact that I do not have sex are not the reasons why I identify as asexual. The reasons why, I mean the reason why I identify as grey asexual is because I do not feel sexual attraction. Because in a world of my own where things would go as I want them to go and if I could, you know, um, sort of shape myself the relationship that I would like to have with a romantic partner, sex would not be part of the picture. However, um, I could decide to engage into sexual relationships just because I would like to please my partner in a respectful and consensual way because I understand that for that person it means something, that it means that we're close and it's something special they want to experience with me because I think it's a healthy part of the relationship because I just think it's fun even though I don't feel the need or I don't feel the desire or the attraction to have sex. This is not only something that's, you know, um, relevant to asexuality. In the Roman and Greek era, for example, men would engage into homosexual um, relationships, but they would not be homosexual. What does it mean? It basically means you could have gay sex, but it would not make you a gay man. I mean, we have very few documentation about gay women, that's why I'm focusing on gay men, by the way. Um, the idea of a gay man was completely... didn't really make sense at that time. The idea, however, of men enjoying gay sex from time to time, or very, very frequently, obviously was very present in the Greek era especially. The behavior at that time was not equal or was not dictating the identity. And I think that's a very, very smart and beneficial way to look at things. Because, you know, as an asexual person, as a grey asexual person, I always find myself worrying that, you know, when you come out, basically, you know, um, people will think, oh, that's who you are, so you're not going to do that, you're not going to do that, but you're going to do that, and you're going to do this. And if once or twice in your life you happen to do things or not do things um, according to what people were expecting of you, 
they will question you. They will not question your actions and they will not be curious about your actions in a positive and benevolent way. They will question you and your identity, which can be really hard to deal with depending on you know, your self-confidence, depending on how much you trust yourself and the progress you've made and you know, the path you earn at this point in your life. I feel like, especially as an asexual, because it's a sexual orientation that's very little known, um, that's not very much accepted and that many people don't think is true or valid or right. Um, the fact that perhaps one day I will be in a relationship and perhaps one day I will have sex with people um, or with someone, it means for those people that I am not a true asexual. And you can also very much link that to biphobia, for example, let's say, and that's something I also relate a lot with and that's going to be for another video. I have only been in relationships or, you know, serious ones or just flirting, whatever, with guys. I've only been, yes, flirting with guys. I've only been sort of in contact with guys and I've only been approached by guys. And that's behavior. That's actions. However, I do not identify as a straight, like I don't, I'm not solely attracted to males. I very, very frequently find women attractive or non-binary people attractive as well. Um, however, if you look at my actions and if you look at my behavior, what do you think? You think I am straight. And so it is very hard for me to explain to people when I will, when I'm willing to do so, uh, that I'm not straight. First of all, because I am gray sexual but also uh, because I also am attracted to women on a romantic and aesthetic perspective and level but people will say oh but you don't know you've never dated a girl or you never kissed a girl or you've never been with a girl in that sort of you know relationship or situation it takes a lot of self-confidence as I said to be like Yes, you're right. I have never done these things and I've never tried these things, but I know what I am. I know who I am. And the fact that I've never experienced these things does not change my identity. And the fact that I have experienced these things also do not change my identity. So I think it's time we stop really equating behavior with identity because it is not, it doesn't make sense. It's not efficient. Honestly, to say to someone you're not gay because you've only been with guys or you're not bi or you're not pansexual because you've only been with this gender or to say to someone you're not asexual because you're having sex with your partner or you've had sex in the past, it is ignorant and it's also very harmful and it's disrespectful and invalidating and that's not something you should do and sometimes we do it with the best intentions and without even realizing it for example i have a very very good friend whom i love dearly and i was sort of confiding in her and telling her about the feelings that i've had for girls for a few years it's gonna be in another video and she was like but you don't know you've never dated girls you only talk to boys in that way you know, and she was not trying to be mean, she was not trying to invalidate me, she was just basically saying what everyone else is saying. And that didn't make me feel good, you know? So that's something we need to be aware of and something we need to be careful with. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Let me know if you guys have ever been in that situation, dealt with that, thought about that. And yeah, I hope you find it interesting and I will see you soon with another video. So thank you for watching and I shall see you later guys. Bye!